Welcome to Makers International, a podcast of makers from three countries, two continents, and featuring five guys separated only by the same language. Here's your host, Richard Morley. Hello, 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 hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good times, whatever time it is and wherever you're listening. Joined with me, as always, Mr. Chris Cute. What's up, everybody? And Mr. Alan Robinson. How you doing, fellas? And Mr. Joe Whitaker. You're right, I'm yeah. And I haven't really got a very good intro for him this week because, well, it's Jamie Page after all. Jamie! How are you doing? Yeah. I was searching desperately to find an amusing intro for you this week, Jamie, and um, all I could see was some really hideous photographs on your um, Facebook profile, and they really weren't that uh, family friendly, so you kind of scuppered me this week. Um, they're not hideous, they're <laughs> pat lap. Don't be horrible. <laughs> no, it was, the, it was the your face on the hideous picture that was just, oh, your, right. just your face. So that's good enough. So. Uh, <laughs> You couldn't come up with a good intro, so you insulted him instead. <laughs> if in doubt. <laughs> right, so this week's shout out and thank yous. Just very quickly, we have Joe's Basement Workshop, Shogun Jimmy, Rob's Woodshop, Jim Dockrell, KK Make, Steve French, The Red Smith, Robert Evans, Wacky Woodcraft, Wacky Woodworks, I apologise, and Mr. Heath Knuckles. Talking of which, we're also joined tonight, as you probably already know, Heath, how are you doing? I'm doing great, and the audio is all hosed up. Um, somebody's got, uh, somebody has a YouTube live feed running in the background. If somebody wants to double check on that and just kind of mute that YouTube live feed, that would be yes, really cool. Yes, yes, that was me. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. I'm doing great, Richard. How are you? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, yeah, well, normally we um, we go through the whole, you know, you can rate us on iTunes and find us on all our social medias and how much we love it when people get in touch with us. And it just seemed quite quite lucky that you commented on our video la or our podcast last week and you're with us this week, which is pretty cool. So uh, who, who would like to – I'd actually organised vaguely a random listener question for this week. Um, Chris, have you got any? Um, well, we'd had a, a listener question last week from Joe, uh, from Joe uh, Basement Woodworking, but it was directed towards Alan, and I'll just point Alan's attention to that. So he may want to answer that question when we're not on the air. Um, but other than that, no, I did, I did not. <laughs> I don't even want to know the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to bring it up. I, I, go leave a look at it. It's on last week's uh, last week's episode, Alan. I'll check it out. Thank you, Joe. Okay, <laughs> you're welcome. I, I actually had a. A message from a listener about something to do with routing and I answered the question um, and I wrote the question down and I've not got the bit of paper with me and now we've gone live so I do apologize to the gentleman in question but at least he has the answer um, but anyway let's get back to um, his name was Turgert Turgert was it T T U R G A R T because I, I sent you the details, didn't I? And so at least well, yeah, one, one of us is. I didn't, this, this is a question that was sent to you on Instagram, and obviously I didn't uh. get it. <laughs> <laughs> so Turgart, Turgart, or however you say that, from Instagram. Go ahead, Richard. He has a question. Do you remember what the question was? Or do I need to do that work for you too? No, it was it was about V grooves and V groove cutters and how deep to cut, if I remember rightly, wasn't it? Yes. Is that right? Um, so the question was how deep can he cut at any one go with a v groove cutter and essentially it, it kind of it um it doesn't really matter on the, the the shape of the cutter to be honest the rule of thumb is never cut deeper than the thinnest part of the cutter um because it's basically all about the area that the cutter is cutting and therefore the resistance of the material but as most of us can probably appreciate it, it the materials are so different i mean you can have two bits of wood from the same plank from the same tree and they'll behave differently to you know a different species so that's kind of a starting point um with a v-groove cutter you know you can go deeper than the thinnest part because obviously the thinnest part is like a tiny little point which is fairly good it really boils down to use that as your starting point and then you'll feel your way if you feel the the router's getting bogged down cut less if you can hear the motor sort of starting to strain cut less if you're starting to burn the material cut less and it'll make it a lot easier and you'll be able to cut 
conversely if you feel that it's really cutting very very easily um, then you can probably get away with cutting a little bit more but that's sort of your baseline starting point there for for that one so never cut deeper than the thinnest part of the cutter i hope that helps not just Turgart, but everyone else as well. So, right, let's get back to our guest this week. Heath, how are you? I am doing fantastic. How are you doing, uh, Richard? I, I'm not too bad. I'm a little bit of a... Um, I've, I've been busy. I've been doing other things. I haven't really planned as much as I probably should have done, so I'll just say that outright. Um, I had to very carefully choose my intro for you because my Yiddish actually isn't that good and by all accounts um, <laughs> I think some people last week got the wrong end of the stick um, when I was chatting with, with nope. Jimmy. Um, or the right one depending on how you look at it. <laughs> well just, just to clear things up we were chatting with Jimmy and all is good so um, no need to worry and hopefully I didn't offend anyone. Um, because after all, we do call ourselves makers international, although not bi or multilingual. So yeah. you know, bear with us on that one. So, uh, who who's going to start? Um, let's move on now. Let's just to get that. Uh, out that of the way well, let me <laughs> let me bail you out of that, Richard Heath. Uh, take, us, take us back to the beginning. You have a really unique style of wood turning. You do some beautiful, beautiful work. But take us back to the beginning of that. To tell us how it all started. Uh, thank you, Alan. I do appreciate that. And uh, first and foremost, I want to thank welcome. each and every one of you for uh, having me on the show. Uh, oh, I truly appreciate that as well. Push on, um, me, Bob. Go. <laughs> as far as uh, as that, I, it's been uh, March of uh, 2017 would uh, put me at three years as far as wood turning. Uh, my father had given me uh, an old Craftsman uh, 12 by 36 uh, inch uh, lathe and. Uh, it sat in my uh, shop for at least a year, and he called me up one day and said, you know, you could turn pins on that, and I just started turning pins, and uh, of course, uh, inspired by, you know, all of these people that post projects and things on the uh, internet, uh, stumbled across a gentleman named uh, Richard, uh, I think he's from uh, Vermont, Richard uh, Chaitlin's, uh, I'm not going to get the last name right. I don't know that he does much social media, but he does hybrid uh, forms and uh, just uh, basically start digging into, you know, how can you uh, create a hybrid form? And and uh, I'm just, I'm ate up with it, basically, I guess. I'm surprised that you say three years. I, I was expecting you to say, you know, 20 plus years of all day, every day experience. <laughs> no, no, thank you, uh, Alan. No, no, not at all. Um, it's uh, just something, you know, you you find something you truly enjoy and uh, it uh, it festers a little bit. And and I just uh, truly, uh, and true, I really enjoy working with the uh, resin and, of course, the burls. I mean, who doesn't love burls anyhow? But uh Kind of, you really don't even have to touch a burl, and it's just has that natural beauty. But so you obviously, you obviously were working on a lathe and had a lathe uh, interested in the lathe before you started combining materials and 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 turning. Yes, your own stuff. exactly, okay. exactly. I started out just turning pins, um, right. bottle stoppers, uh, small bowls, uh, and of course, you know, I was kind of one of those guys that uh, really hadn't embraced the social media. So I was just kind of lurking in the shadows, watching folks on YouTube, you know, talking to my dad and uh, made a couple of trips over to my dad's shop. And he gave, he'd given me a couple of lessons and, and just, uh, again, it's, it's been, it's been a treat. Uh, and I've met so many fantastic people along the way as well. That's the amazing thing. Uh, well, here's the thing that's probably going to blow a lot of people away about you. Because it blew me away. Um, I was like, holy crap. Um, and I, you know, I'll bet you, I, well, at least I know Richard probably is close. Um, <laughs> sorry. Buddy. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you just mentioned that you were kind of standoff. It's not really that big part of social media. You didn't really get into it. Your YouTube channel, I think, is just almost coming up on a one-year anniversary. Um, your first video that you ever put out on YouTube, the first video you ever did, has over 1,100,000 views. How in the heck did you manage that? That is like unheard of, dude. I mean, that is outrageous. Congratulations, first of all, but my God, that's amazing. 
no, 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 absolutely no clue. It's, it's, uh, um, I, I kind of look back and, you know, you look at your analytics and, and you try to, you try to determine what, uh, what works, what doesn't at the same time. It's about for me enjoying what it is I like to do. And, you know, I know people discuss the topic of content, quality of content, this, that, and the other. But I guess if you, if you're really into it and you really enjoy it, um, you know, it, uh, a little bit uh, overwhelming on this end. Um, you know, I, I know I thought, uh, I'll flip the switch. I'll, I'll give this a shot. I'll try YouTube a little bit. And I've really enjoyed it. And, I've again, I've met so many uh, uh, beautiful people under the sun oh, yeah. uh, associated with YouTube. And it's, uh, it's been a treat. It, it, it's, really, it's really been a treat. You know what? And, and I think we're all out here doing what we do. And maybe, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I think we're all out here doing and putting ourselves out there because we enjoy doing it. And so, so everybody, I think everybody loves it the same. It just, everybody doesn't pop onto the scene first video with over a million views on a, on a single, single video. That's just, I, I, I'm still blown away by that, Heath. I mean, I think, it's, I think it's fantastic, but it doesn't happen very often. I hope you know that. Well, you know, I think that uh, I do want to mention that that first video I uploaded to YouTube. Um, and I think this is important. You know, we every single one of us have, have stumbled across those uh, channels that just spot on quality, um, the uh -huh. the camera work, the audio, this, that, and the other. And uh, um, that was I, I used my uh, I think it was a it was a Galaxy S three to record that uh, video, and I used. Uh, iMovie used iMovie the iMovie app I think it's iMovie uh, but uh, I guess it's you know you could take the smaller pieces and plug those together it doesn't have to be something extravagant this huge setup of you know Canon you know two or three cameras this that and the other um, but uh, I guess uh, folks seem to to enjoy that uh, and uh, well, I think it's awesome. Um, Thank you. Sometimes um, it's more about keeping it simple and just getting the footage and putting it out there than it is about, you say, the you know fancy camera angles. And yes, that does help, and it does make things more sure interesting um, it does. and kind of polished. But you you know, as the old saying goes, you can only polish it so so far. Um, well, it's Harry Truman, thing, right? <laughs> something like that well one thing I, I didn't actually realize that you got over a million views on that first video um but i did know that your channel is less than 12 months old isn't it that's correct i started i believe it was in june of uh 2016 uh so june, yeah so that's, a, year. that's a relative newcomer in terms of being on youtube absolutely but you've just gone over twenty three and a half thousand subscribers in less than 12 months i mean that's obviously testament to what you do the, the you know the, the quality of the footage that you you put out there um but that still surprised me because you've only got and i say only got 1.7 1 1.8 million views in total on your channel and when you take that 1.1 away from that first video that means there's a lot of people out there missing all that other content that you've already put out there and that's you know i mean that's kind of that's borderline criminal because of the stuff that you do it's very very unique compared to the general youtube content that's out there even if you just narrow it down to turning i think but um, i mean i didn't mean to barge in and, and steal your thunder there um chris but um one thing i would like to ask heath about is the resin that you you know when you're making your hybrid um, things can you talk us through kind of like the, the process and what you do and how you do it I mean do you use a, a pressure chamber do you vacuum it or what firstly how do you do it and why did you get into that I mean because that's not a very common kind of area within turning on I don't think I might be wrong but that's my view um. I guess, uh, well, I, to start out, as far as the process, it would be selecting the wood and, you know, figure out what, what it is you'd like to cast. I do take generally that piece of wood and I'll stabilize that wood in a vacuum chamber. 
with uh, a stabilizing resin, and I, I prefer to use uh, cactus juice uh, stabilizing resin. And uh, once that's done, you cure that in an oven, then you transfer to a mold. There's some cleanup work along the way with the, you know, after you stabilize the piece, you'll, you'll get a little bit of excess. Uh, and I found, for me, uh, according to the manufacturer's instructions, you're supposed to wrap the wood in foil after you've uh, stabilized it or, I guess, placed it under a vacuum in a vacuum chamber. You pull it out, wrap it in foil, stick it in the oven. Um, right. I've, I've, I've had some uh, viewers mention that removing the foil, allowing it to uh, basically a drip pan in the oven as you're drying the piece, because that's the, that's the portion where you're actually curing uh, the resin or, you know, making everything solid. And once you get that done, I've, without the foil, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, you don't have as much cleanup work. So anyway, once it's stabilized, then you need to create a mold. Stick that in the mold, mix up your resin, do the pour, place it. I use a pressure pot, and the reason I use a pressure pot is that there's only a certain amount of working time with the resin, and the working time is, of course, just that. When you can add, uh, you know, your dyes, this, that, and the other, the mixing portion, and, of course, then that's within, for instance, Alumilite Clear has a seven-minute open time, uh, and that that does it, it does depend on what the sh what your shop temperature is if you're running your shop at 75 degrees that will reduce the open time and i know this because i've stumbled across that a few times i do keep my, i do keep my shop pretty toasty and needless to say anymore i prefer to uh, mix resin at about 65 degrees because then you get your full open time uh, so again the Illumilite Clear, they have two versions, the clear and the slow version. The clear is a seven minute, the slow version is, I believe, a 12 minute open time. The difference Which between the two is that the first one, uh, it takes approximately, I think, two to three hours to cure the Illumilite Clear, to cure in the pressure pot. And then the, uh, set, uh, the 12 minute takes uh, right at about three to four hours to cure in the pressure pot. The reason I use a pressure pot is to eliminate the bubbles. Anyone that's worked with resin, they've tried, you know, performing a pour, and the next thing you know, the whole blank uh, is riddled with bubbles. It looks, you know, it's, it's just not a, it's not a good thing. And it, and I stumbled across that. But if uh, I've watched some others uh, out there that use resin as well, and some use uh, a vacuum chamber to degas the resin which that, okay. that that works great but you need to have that open time you need the open time or i know per the manufacturer's instructions as far as alumilite you can degas part a and b it's two part uh, uh, resin you can degas part a and b and then slowly mix them but for me there's no you know i'm doing one of these things and you know what it's, like, it's like beating eggs or something you know it's like beating eggs or something so uh you just put all the air back into it then, don't you? exactly so the pressure pot for me it's 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 a no-brainer you can mix it as fast as you want to mix it you don't have to do a small you know slow long pour on it you could just mix it toss it in the uh in the mold and, and stick it in the pressure pot and let it sit What's for the about four hours What's the PSI? You put you you looking at like fifty or what's what's the gauge? Uh, what, what, I, what what? I always try to point back to the manufacturer. The manufacturer, I think, suggests right at about thirty five PSI. Um, okay. And through research and and stuff I've done on the internet, I've found that uh, and I I I can't honestly say I'm not sure as far as thirty five PSI, but I have the. Uh, um, my pressure pot will run up to a 90 psi. I keep it at right at about 50 to 55 psi. I figure that gives me enough, you know, room right there for safety. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, right at say, about 55. 30, 35 psi is not actually that high a pressure, really, is it? I mean, that's that's less than the tires on your car. True. 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 
not that you'd want the, the lid coming off at that kind oh, of pressure, obviously. No, but um, no, I mean, relatively all, speaking, that's a that's a fairly low-ish pressure. I'd have thought. Yeah, um, yeah. Right at I generally I average about fifty-five psi uh, during the curing process. Oh, so you're you're deliberately kind of over pressurizing it yeah, in terms it, of what the instructions say. And you know, part of it's it, it's a lot of it's trial and error. I mean, there's no um, there's no book out there that, that, that points you along the way to say, hey, do this, A, B, you know, but uh, it's been some trial and error and um, also working with the uh, larger, larger blanks over, say, you know, smaller bottle stoppers to pin blanks. Um, and I found it seems to work. I have, obviously, I've lost some uh, blanks along the way. And again, it's been a lot of trial and error, but it's it's been a treat. I've enjoyed the I really enjoyed working with it. Well, I mean, look at just looking at the thumbnails on your videos. Um, you can't argue with your process in terms of the quality that you, the end results of your your blanks when you think because they are absolutely stunning before you even put them on the lathe. I mean, they're they're beautiful ornaments for, to start with. So um, yeah, Thank you, certainly wouldn't diss you for but no, I mean, absolutely. That, that's exactly what they are. But um, yeah, I, we'd, I don't want to take the whole podcast up we're talking about the casting process and all the rest of it but I do really want to talk to you about this because I genuinely find it interesting but has anyone else got any questions for yeah. um, there's, a, there's a quite a few uh, chat, uh, questions from over in the chat room uh, one that was oh, actually, right. one that was actually asked from uh, Brian Bales and it's kind of perked everybody's interest now they won't shut up about it <laughs> um, they want to know do you make your own head koozies head koozies Head oh, oh oh head koozies oh no uh, my uh, my wife she makes the head koozies or the uh, you know whatever you want to call them there um, she crochets mm. these and and uh, and uh, I, I I enjoy wearing them obviously that's probably pretty much a most of you have seen me in pictures I'm normally I think JB would know this Chris would as well yeah. mm -hmm. are you uh, ready to do a reveal. No, no, no. <laughs> no. I've got this. I've got we this call, problem with being bald. We 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 call them toques up here. There's hair. Oh, you look like a different person. I wow. do have hair. A little, a little you really bit look like now. a different person with it off. But I normally prefer wearing that anyway. Does that answer your questions for Brian? Does that Brian? Does that answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's your toque on if you're comfortable. <laughs> Uh, I, I didn't. I'm generally even more interested now because I didn't realize your other half was a crocheter. Does yes, because mine is as well. Does, does yours I know that? I, I caught that on well. Facebook. So, uh... yeah, and uh, we've got we've got another one from Sean from SE Woodworks, and he said, "What kind of bell is your favorite to turn, and what is the one that looks the best in your opinion?" Oh wow. Yeah, it's kind of tough. I bet. Wow, that's yeah, that's it's really <laughs> tough. I bet you know. Well, honestly, <laughs> excuse me. Just say Burl Ives, and we'll and we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I I can't say I honestly have a favorite. I, well, maybe. Uh, I really enjoy working with uh, a maple uh, maple burl, and the reason why is it. Uh, it really takes the dye well. Uh, I like using an alumilite dye, and uh, the maple burl just it takes the dye. It takes it. It, it just seems to really pop over um, using like red. Uh, I think it's pronounced Molly. Red Molly. It's a, a Australian eucalyptus, and uh, those woods are so dense. And plus, they're just you know burl in general, just a beautiful uh, piece of of, of, of wood. And so, you know, some of the, most of them, you don't even really want to uh, add any uh, dye or anything like that to, but uh, um, I would say probably maple burl. That, that, that's, that's what it really, and it's a little bit harder to come by, it seems. What you want to do, have you still got that one that you showed us earlier? I know yes. there's a lot, there's a lot of people are not going to be able to see this because this is the audio version, but if you're watching this on YouTube, then you, that's just amazing. It's stunning. It really is. It's beautiful. So Thank you, Joe. If, if you're listening on your iPad, I've got one as well. Go get on YouTube. Yeah, get on YouTube. Get on his Instagram. Everything. Check it out. That's just um, insane. 
And I used red, uh, I don't know how well the grain picks up on that. Right there, that looks beautiful. But uh, it, the the hard thing about it is, is when you create the blanks, it's a little hard to, uh, sometimes a little hard to, as, as Jamie would say, a little hard to chuck the uh, the piece up and actually, you know, turn turn the piece. Well, for the people that aren't able to see this, uh, what kind of wood is that uh, that you were holding up? Because it, he's holding up a, a blank that is uh, has a burl on either end and has a, a red acrylic or a red uh, lumilite uh, in the middle between the two pieces. So, what kind of what kind of wood is that, Heath? Uh, this would be uh, red molly. Okay. And of course, I uh, used uh, Illumilite Clear slow version. I used the slow version on the resin with some. Uh, I think I used alcohol ink on this one. Um, yeah, alcohol. It's like, it's like a okay. It's like a Superman red. It's it's. Uh, I'm just trying to describe it to people that aren't able to watch the uh, the show today. It it reminds me a lot of you know you see these. Um, uh, wany edge boards that people have sliced down the middle and then matched on the other side and then they cast either a um, like a tempered glass down the middle so it looks like a river yeah. it kind of reminds me of like a tiny little chunk of one of those tables but in say like a pillar box red rather than that blue and it's absolutely it just is breathtaking just to see those yeah so, i've seen those tables those those, those, those tables are, are awesome thank you richard to, right. can, well, I, any, uh, can I just say though, if uh, there are people that are listening to the podcast on SoundCloud and iTunes, that you can go and see the blank uh, on the YouTube channel. Definitely, yeah, absolutely. And oh, as Joe, I think mentioned all, all over Heath's um, Instagram. I mean, that's the 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 downside of this Heath is that the stuff that you produce is so visual. You know, it, not like the stuff that I produce, which is perfect for radio and audio podcasts. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it, it really, it really does need to be seen. So, uh, what what else is going on in the um, in the chat, um, Jamie? Because otherwise, I want to talk to Heath all about the casting process well, and all the rest uh, of it. Well, looking at my notes, we've got one from Sean uh, Sean Meehan. He said, "He said, would you rather have a crappy lathe or no lathe at all?" Oh. Yes, I'll I I take a, a crappy lathe or I'll take a lathe over no lathe at all to be honest with you. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh well so we've got another one here going kind of looking at my notes. Uh boxes or briefs. <laughs> 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 oh, I can't help himself. Jamie's notes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, any mini miny mo. <laughs> Depends on what day of the week it is, uh, you know. You wear them all. <laughs> do, do you have any of those crocheted mankinis? That, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Depends if the koozies are in the wash. <laughs> he's, he, he's a hybrid all the way, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> I mix and mash everything, dude. What do you think? Huh? <laughs> we just have to be stabilized with some of that cactus juice first. <laughs> oh. I am wearing a shirt. I'm wearing a uh, shirt. <laughs> Yeah, Cactus Pete might have a problem with that. Uh, but <laughs> as long as you, as long as you don't wear them on the outside of your pants, I think we're all good. It's cool. Uh, good. Richard, go please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, one thing I wanted to ask you: we sort of talked about you, you've only been turning for for three years. You said, and you got into that through your dad. Yes. And you started turning pens and things like that. But at what point did you realize that? that wasn't enough and that you wanted to then add this you know hybrid resin turning and, and you kind of almost turned a corner for want of a better expression within that process i mean surely you didn't just you know get a lathe and start making these amazing no no i did not um google images you know, Google Images, I'd say it starts with Google Images, and I stumbled across, again, the gentleman from Vermont, uh, which led me, um, you know, it's using some keywords on, on Google. You know, if you got the right keywords, you're going to be pulling up the images, of course, you're looking for. And uh, I found that that keyword was hybrid or, or hybrid blanks. Um, 
and that led me to YouTube. And I'd been, I'd already been watching YouTube because I'd been wood turning. Of course, you know, I could throw a handful of names out there as far as individuals I really truly enjoyed, and I still do. Uh, pretty much stuck on the wood turning aspect of it, but uh, um, Brendan Stemp would be a gentleman I'd stumbled across. And some Jamie, I know Jamie knows Brendan Stemp. Maybe Chris Allen may know. I'm not sure. Do you guys, Richard, Joe? I'm, I'm not aware of him, but I'm really not a big turner, to be honest. Okay, well, he's he's one hell of a, a, a wood turner. Uh, and just, uh, he's got a channel. Uh, I believe it's a U-turn. Or I think it's just his name, Brendan Stemp. But uh, some of his work, I was inspired by some of his work. And uh, starting to do the homework as to, you know, how, how can I do this? How can I do similar? Uh, it wasn't until I discovered Instagram. I haven't been on Instagram that long, uh, maybe six months at best, I suppose. And uh, wow, simply amazing images, stuff to look at, all that great eye candy. And uh, that's the kind of stuff I've, uh, I've been inspired by. But uh, um uh, it's just, a, it's, it's, it's that, uh, it's kind of an addiction that's hard to, seems a little tough to feed, but, uh, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm Richard, I got, I got a, I got a question on the chat with me, which may lead you into the direction you want to go. Uh, and it's from Carol Kolonowski. Uh, he's asking Heath, uh, what kind of resin is alumilite clear? Is it like a polyurethane resin? And he also um, wants to, know, he also wants to know what kind is cactus juice so that, the people over in the UK can have a look at their local suppliers to see if there's something that, you know, in case cactus juice isn't available in the UK. I don't know. Is it, guys? I've not heard I of it. I think it is in the UK. I've heard okay. of it, but I haven't seen it over here. Okay. So, so it is available if you do a search, Carol. But, oh, but back to his original question, what kind of resin is aluminite clear? Is it polyurethane resin or what is it? Uh, you know, I haven't honestly done my homework, so I'm going to sound like a complete ass, and that's that's cope. I'm copacetic with that. Uh, but uh, Drew, that's Drew. No, is that Drew? KK's Drew, I think maybe. But no, uh, Carol. 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 I'm sorry, Carol. Carol. That's right. Um, I started out, and I, I guess I'm kind of dancing around the question, Chris. I don't mean to do that. Uh, All right. I started out with uh, a resin called uh, Parks uh, Parks Super Glaze. And it's a bar top resin that you can pick up at your local big box store. Uh, and needless to say, the stuff is just, I think it's an epoxy. I think the part super glaze is an epoxy resin. It I is. Think. It's an epo it is an epoxy because it, it's the same thing as the pour on epoxy that's made by a different company. It's called, the other company is called Envirotech Light. Uh, but then there's Park Super Glaze. They're both the same product. There's an A and a B and they use it for bar tops. Yes. I'm assuming. Um, so, so I guess long story short, started off with the Park Super Glaze. This stuff just smells disgusting. But anyway, I made some things along the way with that. Realized, okay, as I had gone uh, bigger as far as larger pores, wasn't exactly achieving the results I wanted to achieve. Uh, Zach Higgins, as some of you may know Zach Higgins. Uh, he's uh, uh, he's a wood turner as well, and I found that uh, Zach Higgins was using the Alumilite product. So, um, basically, I picked up the Illumilite product from uh, Zach Higgins as far as seeing what he was doing over at his channel. And uh, a part A, part B, um, I could send him a PDF, you know, as far as the specs to the product. But I have received that question uh, quite a few times on my channel. And uh, um, generally, I point them back to the manufacturer for any I know there's a Q and A on, or not a Q and A. I'm sorry. Um, I guess it would be a Q and A over at the Illumilite. There's a forum, and then of course the, I think, uh, Carol also uh, asked the question about the cactus juice. I know of two two types of cactus juice. One would be the uh, one I prefer using. I have not had any experience with the other. It's just the one. I it works, so I'm sticking with it. And that's the cactus juice. I picked that up. Uh, that can either be purchased at Lumilite.com or TurnText.com. Curtis down at TurnText.com, he, he's the one that carries the uh, cactus juice. And uh, he also, I believe, has uh, Illumilite. Uh, he sells Illumilite on his website as well. But uh, he has a QA and a on, or a forum, kind of a forum over there on his website as well. That 
you know, those are the true, what I would, what I would call the, 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 the SMEs. That's an acronym. I like throwing acronyms out there. Acronyms <laughs> are fun. S M E SMEs, subject matter expert. Curtis over there at, at, at Cactus Juice, he can answer most of those questions. And then, of course, there's Carol and Mike that work for Illumilite.com. And those folks are spot on. And uh, needless to say, I've, I've, I've had to call them a handful of times. <laughs> but you, you alluded to the fact that there was a different kind of cactus juice than what is labeled as oh, cactus yes. juice. Yeah. Uh, what is that? Fast. Uh, it's something fast. Grizzly, I believe, sells it fast. Uh, fast cat, not fast cap. Fast cure, not fast cure. Um, let me see here. If I could pull. Oh, if if well, if Grizzly sells it, then go look for it on Grizzly. Okay, that's all that matters. Exactly. Uh, Steve Twardell said that he got cactus juice in Ireland, but got got arrested for squeezing the crap out of a cactus at the local bar. <laughs> <laughs> Which, no, I, I was, you can't I do was, that, Steve. I was just going to ask a really stupid, limey question here. Uh, Illumilite and Cactus Juice are not materials. They're, are they brand names? Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so it's not, it literally isn't the juice of a cactus, is it? Because no. I, I certainly, over, I mean, I, I know very little about this, but it's something that definitely interests me. Um, no, I hear... Yes, it is. It's actually juice out of a cactus, Richard. Go ahead. Go ahead and try that. Okay. Go ahead and try that. It's probably probably a little bit damp for us in the UK and Ireland to. Uh, but you have you, you have to hands, You have to hand squeeze it. Yeah. Squeeze it by hand. Yeah. Um, so you feel a little. That thought, that thought crossed my mind too. <laughs> you know, there's. An, I, don't, I don't know. So I'm asking the question, and now I do know. So I'm only proportionally wiser. Um, I have used a casting resin before for casting, you know, small flat thing. You know, like you see, like, I don't know, beetles cast is like paperweights in shops. Yeah. I'm assuming that Illumilite is one of these clear, like water clear casting resin things. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Because because when, when I've used, and I haven't I've done big blocks, only really like thin I don't know, like the top of a, a coaster, you know, about maybe quarter inch thick max. I've used a company which is just down the road from me called Drylon. So that might help people in the UK for a supplier of clear casting resins. Um, Carol, Carl, anyone else? I'm going to give it a go at some point, which is why I'm interested in the whole pressure pot and vacuum pot and all the rest of it um, to see how. Joe, Joe. Joe, you've done some of that, haven't you? Not with um, Illumilite. I've actually been away to my turn here because I, I kind of want to be... Um, Dive in. Stealing kind of all the talk about it because I've got West Systems Epoxy. And when I brought it, that seemed to be what a lot of people on YouTube was using. And just as I brought it, everybody seemed to start using Illumilite. And that's when I was like, oh, no, what have I done? Because I brought like the big batch thinking, oh, this will last me for ages. I'll be using this all the while. And I have a nightmare with bubbles and stuff like that. So, judging by what you've said already, would you recommend to stay clear of the epoxies, especially if you want to do big casting projects, big pours? I'd say, yeah. Um, I know that the, I believe uh, it's right at about, so I'm thinking about 4,000 grams. You can do a larger pour with the, the Illumilite. Um, and each resin, as far as, you know, it's, it's basically referencing the uh, spec chart or the tech sheet uh, as far as the manufacturer because the, the properties are so, so different or can be. Um, I, I do know some resins as far as depending on how you're going to mill those after you, you know, slap a, a board together or something and you want to make a box or, you, you know, for me it's mostly or mainly turning. But uh, some turning properties or being able to mill that after creating a blank it's brittle. Uh, it'll you it'll, it'll more sh you know you'll have this effect of it shattering instead of a cracking. You'll run into that. Uh, I don't know that I answered your question there, Joe. You may want to ask me that again. Just just basically referring to the the West Systems epoxy because I've got that like how you mentioned earlier that you tried an epoxy resin like that cheap brand and how you was having trouble when you started doing the larger pores. I was saying, yes. would you think that would be as a whole that epoxies have that problem? 
I, I'm not exactly sure, to be honest. Um, I do know that the the parks, uh, the parks super glaze, the bar top resin, the larger pour there creates a, just a, an amazing amount of heat. I was actually a little worried that it may uh, it may ignite, you know, overnight <laughs> as it was curing. And there was about a 24 hour cure time on the parks super glaze resin. Um, and you know, and you know what? It, and and I I know this just off the top of my head, Joe, is that that the park super glaze and the uh, the pour on epoxy that you can get from I believe it's Envirotech Light, um, they both are actually softer substances than what if you had done if you do your West systems and you and you've got a nice West system system there and you mix those two together, they're going to form a much harder casting than what those pour ons will. They're they're much right. think of it as pine uh, versus walnut. You know, yep. the, the pour on is pine. The the the, the west system is going to be more walnut. Basically, is the deal. Right. I think. What where the aluminite falls in there, I don't know because I've never worked with it. Heath would know better than I would. Probably, it's probably much harder than uh, than west systems. I would I would think. I think don't some um, don't some casting resins suit better for thin pours and thick pours as well because when Absolutely. I, I tried to um i can't remember what i was it might have been the dry on stuff but the, the, when i went to buy it the guy was like well what are you casting and how big is it and I'm, i sort of said and he said oh you'll be all right with the thin pour stuff because i was thinking thin pour as in like you know 16th of an inch just as like a, a varnish kind of layer he said oh no you can go up to whatever size and when i actually poured it um I made up a blank with some melamine face chipboard and I hot glued it all together and put in what I was doing. And there was a bit like, I was using the, the top of an aerosol can cause I was trying to make a, a ring. So I thought oh, I'll, I'll bung that in the middle cause that'll make less resin and all the rest of it and pour it all in, I took it outside. And it, the, you know, you were saying about them creating heat and it was started getting warm and it started smoking cause it was melting the plastic cap. And it started heating up the hot glue. So all the hot glue just went blum. And this enormous, well, it wasn't even that. It was only about an, maybe an inch and a half tall. Just went blum. It just went everywhere. There's still yeah. West Systems or whatever this epoxy resin stuff is out on the slabs outside. Because they just like went Pow. So I never did anything after that, actually. <laughs> it so it kind of scared me off. <laughs> Yeah, I've excited. I've ex I've had a few failures along the way, and and uh, you know, the more and more I, I I still continue to experiment with uh, with the uh, resin, more so the wood, but uh, um, the aluminite is is it as far as wood turning goes, the aluminite is it, it's excellent. It's great to turn. Uh, if I could talk Jamie into deciding to do what his you know what he needs to do with that blank be able to see what uh, what he comes up with but uh well I, I know what i want to do i'm just too scared to do it <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't want to mess it up he uh he, he, let me let me, let me get pack of white. <laughs> i think it was meant to be more than that jamie um Heath, I want uh, all this uh techie stuff aside i want to get to know you uh what do you do for a living man i work for a telephone company do you like call people or do you climb poles? I mean, what do you do? Uh, switch tech. I work. Uh, I work as a switch tech. Uh, basically, if you if you can remember back uh, years ago when uh, you know it was a, a ten cents a minute or twenty five cents a minute, you picked your long distance carrier. I work at a, a long distance uh, switch site. And now, oh, okay. and now it's a dollar fifty a minute. <laughs> 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 hey, aluminum aluminite's not cheap, man. Let me give give him a break. No, it's it's not. <laughs> so you, you married? You got kids? I mean, what, what's what's the what's the home life, man? Uh, married, three kids. Uh, the uh, youngest is about to graduate, um, and uh, right after that, uh, well, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> what, who who knows what the future holds? But uh, no, married know, and then so. three uh, three boys, <laughs> three boys. Yes. <laughs> I know what's after that. Trust me. <laughs> are, they, are they interested in what you do? Do they make, or are they just like you know, dad does his dad thing, and I'm not interested? Uh, what in that what were cool. you doing? What, what were you doing at 18, Richard? Uh, I joined the army. I joined the <laughs> army too. <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah, they they're interested in the sense of uh, you know just a feedback, but as far as uh, uh, the making, you know, I think at 18. Uh, you know, I look back and I think, wow, I wish, you know, 
I'd have listened to a few things that my mother and father had said to me, you know, you know, there's a reason I'm telling you this. And it, it never, for me, it just never seemed to, to, to sink in. And, uh, it does, uh, it, for me, I, I, I'm completely fascinated with the younger folk that's getting involved with making and, and, uh, uh, and of course I'm thinking of Alan. I know him and his daughter just made a connect Four board Absolutely. and uh, really neat to see uh, the younger folk getting out in the shop. Um, you know, I, I don't know how often I drive down the road and I'm waiting at a stoplight, looking at the uh, mirror in the car in front of me and somebody doing what it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and sometimes just putting those things down and, getting out and doing something it's 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 a uh, it's a joy it's a treat it, I, I completely 100 percent agree with you with what you just said regarding alan's kid but alan how old's your daughter that you made that with she's just turned 13 13 she's so only, she's she's 13. kind of kind of that age where she probably do as you're telling her to do give it a year maybe two and she's going to want to know her own mind a bit more. So you know, I totally agree with the younger kids, but also even more so the people that are in that sort of teenage bracket from sort of, you know, teenager to say 20, because when you, when you stereotype society, there are a big portion of that age group, which just want to, you know, sit on their phones, play on their Xbox or hang around street corners or whatever. And there are people out there within that age group who, are interested in the making and they're the that's for me the real win because i know when i was your your daughter's age um alan I'd, I'd go and do things with my dad and it was still cool give it a couple of years and i'd wanted to go off and do something that wasn't cool and it took a few years to, for me to then and that's that swing you know you can go i, I could have gone either way in that age and i know a lot of people do you well, go both ways? Well, I that. think it's, I think it's really cool though. Is 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 getting the kids out, uh, you know, in the shop or doing things. We're getting them interested in it um, at a very young age, uh, if you can, if they if they actually do. And you don't want to force it, obviously. But if if you have a five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen year old, and they want they actually have an interest in something, then get involved with them and do that because. Quite honestly, I think if we're if we're stereotyping a, an age group here, then between the ages of like fourteen to twenty two, twenty four, you know, people kind of you know they're going to leave that alone. But a lot of people, myself included, uh, they come back and find it again. You know, yeah. they, 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 they it's just because you you have to. And those are the, the years I'm guessing that you're actually working on finding yourself. And then you know, then you can then you're able to go back and find the things that you actually used to have a lot of fun with when you were a kid. Absolutely. Just keeping that momentum going. But, uh, oh my gosh, look at the time. We are sort of heading towards a uh, glare from the Wolverhampton direction, I think, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> but, um, we, we've talked about you a bit, Heath. We've talked about, obviously, what you do and the way you do it. But what are you currently working on and who are you currently watching on YouTube? Um, I'm just, of course, doing what I've been doing, making some blanks, uh, have some uh, molds put together, and I will be back out in the shop after this. And uh, I have a couple molds I need to toss in the pressure pot. But uh, and I have a couple things going on, but I really can't, unfortunately, mention what those things are. I do Ooh. apologize for that. No, not at um, all. Yeah, Jamie might know, but anyway. Um, <laughs> Oh God! Don't tell me Jamie knows something we don't know. That's just <laughs> again. <laughs> that's just wrong. <laughs> uh, as far as who I'm watching, uh, and I do have her sticker. I did want to mention a lady by the name of Pam Harris. Um, that'd be Highland Boxes, boxes. and uh, she she'd also sent me a nice little ring box. Oh, that's nice of her. I saw that. Yeah. Very cool. On your Instagram, yeah on the instagram and she she's into the resin and wood and uh enjoy watching her channel and of course you know i could i could ramble on and on as far as the uh, the folks that uh, i enjoy watching i think uh, most of us would probably agree when uh you know you're editing videos or working on videos needless to say that takes you away from the you know watching aspect of videos and uh, we don't have seem to have I, as I, much time I'm so with you on that, Chris. Listen to what this guy's saying. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, 
he, you just gave him a pat excuse. Just uh, God. <laughs> Richard, now, if, I, not, now if, I, if this was the I, only I, thing I was doing, if this was all I was doing, you know, I, okay, well, I have six hours today to watch, stri you know, strictly watch YouTube content. Um, but every, every single one of you on this panel know exactly how much it takes to edit, a, you know, how much to edit, to record, and, uh, you know, so on and so yeah. forth. It's, it's, uh, there's, so, yeah, this yeah. podcast alone, this podcast alone takes quite a quite a bit of time. Uh, and, and yeah, and yeah. So no, Richard, I'm not buying it, buddy. I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> totally agree to disagree. <laughs> awesome. Well, what about you then, Chris? Since you're uh, you're in there, what are you working on at the moment? <laughs> well, Anything? I'm not working. I'm picking my nose. I mean, I'm. Not <laughs> I, uh, I am unable to do much of anything. I'm really heeding, at this time, I'm heeding my doctor's advice. After the third time of re-injuring my finger, I've decided to listen to my doctor, and he told me I've got another couple weeks to go, maybe, before I can actually go out and do anything. So that's what I do. I'm, gonna do, I'm, I'm not going to be stupid anymore. Um, well, I can't say that, actually. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be stupid tomorrow, but <laughs> I won't be stupid about that. Let's put it that way. I have been watching a gentleman, though, and I don't know if you guys are familiar. Um, are you guys familiar with Robin Lewis? Oh, absolutely, Australian. Uh, no, oh, actually, no. he's actually he's South African, but he's he currently lives in Australia. Ah, okay. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, that, he's, Joe. yeah. <laughs> I just thought, uh oh, <laughs> he's, he's in Australia. Okay, let's yeah, move yeah, forward. He's currently in Australia, but he's not Australian. He's South African. Uh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> His channel name is Robin Lewis. He played <laughs> Alan. Uh, I ruined it. I'm sorry. Keep going. Just go, go, go. <laughs> he put out a video uh, uh, just 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 a couple of days ago, I believe. Uh, and it was a uh, um, uh, he it was he he called it a plywood inspired lamp. And he basically what he did is he just he he made a bunch of layers of wood to create uh, a look that he wanted. So if you have the opportunity, check out uh, check out Robin Lewis uh, on YouTube. So that was a guy in Australia making something out of plywood. Yeah, and he is at, he's South African, Richard Casino. Well, he, no, he was he was making his own plywood. Oh, even better. So he, yeah, it was he he called it plywood inspired. He didn't say he was made out of plywood. He's it was just you know the, the layers of plywood ins, inspired him to make what he made. It, and it gotcha. actually came out really cool. The lamp, I think, right? Yep, exactly. That's I'm I'm not familiar with that channel, but I, that does sound very interesting. So I'm, I'm going to I'm going to check that one out. Joe, we, we, I'm trying to I'm trying to speed things along for you, mate. Um, what what are you up to? Um, got the radiator covers finished. That's good. Still doing the bunk beds, taking ages. But I've had a chance to actually watch some YouTube this week. And video that stood out to me was from the YouTube channel Stuff I Made. And it's basically it's a it's an idea and it's a brilliant idea. We've all got the corded power tools in our workshop, and they were pain to put away wrapping the cords around them and they get dirty. They take up a lot of space. Well, he's actually showcasing in his video, there's these connectors that are available that kind of clip together and twist. So it's a really strong connection. And basically, chop the cable off your tool. I know it's kind of stressful to do something like that, but chop the cable off, fit the male end on, get your cable with your normal plug that goes to your power, fit the female end on, so then you can just grab your tool with a very short length of cable on, very little room taken up for your storage. Get your one cable for power, clip them together, plug it in very much like the Festool system. But of course, you can add it to any power tool you like then. I just think it's a brilliant idea. It obviously explains and demonstrates much better than what I've just said. So I'll check it out on the Stuff I Made channel. Yeah, so, no, that's, sorry, go on, Chris. That's, so what he did is, he, and I want to make sure I get this right, He, he you, you've got basically one power cord, that you plug all your yep. that you can plug all your tools into, and all your and all your tools now have a very short cord on them, so they don't take up a lot of room. You have to worry about ra wrapping them up and keeping. Them. That's actually pretty cool. I want to see that. Pretty good idea. Yeah, I would. It. it uh, but tell me, where's this guy from, Joe? <laughs> He's from here, UK. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's not available to me. All right, never mind. <laughs> not Australia. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you guys have those funky plugs over there. We don't have those. We have no. It's fine. It it should work because it's it's like a it's on kind of connector. So you just literally wire up your live neutral, and some of them are available with Earth as well. So it, oh. it should be okay. 
Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm, All right. I'm yeah. pretty sure, actually, Chris, that um, the Festool, the, the plugin system that basically that's kind of emulated, they, they do a thing for tools that you can connect. Like if you've got, I don't know, a port cable router, you can rewire that end in so it goes into a, a plug. I'm pretty sure that it works that way because a lot that's of guys cool. have done it with, with various tools. But uh, you see, a lot that's of a great idea. There's a lot of people out there that don't realize that that's another feature of Fest, but we won't even go into that because well, we've done that episode. <laughs> we've, done, we've done that one to death um, and had all the, uh, all the threats. But um, <laughs> what, what, uh, what about you, uh, Jamie? What are you, uh, what are you working on at the moment and who are you watching? Um, well, what am I working on? I've finished the, uh, the post box. It just needs paint now. So, uh, that's uh, that's ready to go. Uh, what am I not working on? The that blank uh, that Heath made. Um, but what am I watching? Uh, have you ever guys ever heard of uh, Paul Jenkins, also known as the Wood Knight? The he's name from, does uh, ring a bell. He's from Australia, not South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, small comment. I'm... <laughs> and uh, he is actually also Australian. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, and, Alan. Uh, I, I am really sorry, dude. I apologize. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to keep my mouth shut on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to think we've done this deliberately. <laughs> he he actually made a. Oh, I'm going to butcher that. It's a triptych. Uh, okay. It was actually an, an art piece. Um, it was made from a, a live edge slab and uh, some epoxy mixed with some. Um, Australian native nuts and leaves, like gum nuts, gum leaves, and some Banksia nuts. And it just, it basically what he done is he, he cut the flat edge and then flicked it so that the, the two live edges were facing each other and then just filled it up with epoxy and the the bits and bobs. What? And it just looks really, really good, it did. And then just hung it on his wall. What did he do to the Banksia? He, sli he basically sliced it up. The banks of your nuts? Yeah, the banks of your nuts, yeah. <laughs> That's really, I've, I've got three <laughs> banks of your nuts that I bought on my for, as like a self birthday <laughs> present years ago, and I've never had the stones to turn them because they, they're starting, all the stuff inside is rattling around, isn't it? We don't want it coming flying. Cause somebody said that they're like really toxic as well. What are we talking about? I don't know. We're, we're moving on. We're moving on. From oh, I don't know. Just move on. Chris is going on about his nuts. <laughs> I just feel bad for that poor Banksy. Yeah, that's all. Okay. <laughs> He's going on about some Australian nut. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Well, going back to... Um, I'm going to try. I'm going to try really hard. Going back to Joe's radiator covers, because I was working on some radiator cover or a radiator cover as well. That got finished and it's been installed. And I'm just waiting for the photographs of all the, the finish because that turned out rather nicely. But I've been super busy. And you know, I put my back out last week and I was wincing around. It had nearly a week to recover. I finished, I did the, the radiator cover, I fitted it with some other bits, and I helped a friend of ours move house yesterday and lifting their dining room table. I did my back again, but not quite so bad. So it was like recover and then, and then so I'm, I don't know what I'm going to be doing next week. You might want to think about getting a back brace, Richard. I mean, just, a, you know, I, I need a, I need a girdle or one of those. Well, like, well that's kind of, kind of what they are, but I mean, dude, they really do help. You might want to invest like, you know, I don't know, what is it? 20 pounds? I could probably do without in about 20 pounds on. I'm a bit of a run. <laughs> skinny we could play a little, 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 little on the rib cage. <laughs> Before anyone else gets a chance to have a dig, um, what uh, what have I been doing? I'm working. I'm making some like hand tool things for some jobs that I've got coming up. You know, you know. The other week I was saying, you know, if you're going to make money off the job and you're going to want a tool or something, don't bother restoring it or just go out and buy it. I've completely gone against my own advice there, and I'm going to have a go at making them because I've got plenty of time. Um, I don't need them in a hurry, so I'm actually making some. You won't be able to see it if you're listening on the podcast. So like scrapers, stainless steel. So a bit of sheet metal work in some stainless steel and some fancy they're kicking around some of my fancy wooden handles. So uh, there'll probably be a video, but I haven't decided. I haven't done any recording yet because I'm kind of just dipping my toe and 
blindly working out how these are going to be made. So, but I've got to make loads of them. So they might be a video maybe coming out in 2019, 2020, something like that. <laughs> so, cause I've did, I haven't made any videos for ages because I just have not had the time. And, you know, as you guys will understand being busy right then ramble, ramble, ramble. That's, that my shout out this week uh, i have actually had a little bit of time to watch um, some youtube i it's only a quick video it's only like two minutes long and it was put out by 3m the, the the company it's about impact testing their safety glasses and it's a really good video to watch if there's a lot of people that have been on my course and said oh you know i've got i've got glasses and and you know then they might or might not be safety glasses but there's like what they do is they fire a six millimeter diameter steel ball at these safety glasses and you know they get that ping and all the rest of it and then they do it against a normal pair of prescription glasses polycarbonate plastic and some safety glass as well and i won't give the game away but you really need to watch the video and that will probably get you wearing your safety glasses really really interesting it's only like two minutes long but it's quite cool everyone likes cool. things being shot at stuff and then seeing the reaction yeah. so. Should be in the eye. yeah that's cool obviously not a real person it's like a <laughs> a, a <laughs> last a, a bust if you like oh i'm not gonna watch it now then all right no mind. <laughs> brilliant um i think that pretty much wraps the show up doesn't it not um before well, we go you actually skip me but don't worry the canadians are used to it right at a time we'll just... <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah we, we, we push the time aren't we we nearly yeah. wrapping the show up. Uh, yeah well, well hit me up next week <laughs> <laughs> alan you got you can't we're well, gonna watch what you say on a podcast man you can't talk too much <laughs> no no it's fine it's fine i'm glad i'm glad you said it now and not at, right at the end when i'd have been really because then i wouldn't have been able to go back and say oh before i forget that because it nearly wraps the show up um what are you up to alan i just finished a video collaboration with se woodworks i made we both wanted to make mallets that weren't your typical mallets so i made a uh a baby rattle inspired by a carver's mallet just the shape of a carver's mallet for my baby daughter but the real star of this collab is se woodworks you got to see his segmented mallet i've never seen anything like it and he made it in like a day it's absolutely wonderful but uh that's not actually my shout out my shout out is uh who uh dave's woodworks he made a a, a carom bit is it called a carom bit knife uh anybody who's watched my channel knows i've made what five or ten knives recently all out of wood and he used the same template i did for the carom bit which i just thought was really cool but he made an actual knife and it's just a, a wonderful video and i really want to use that video to make my first real knife so go check out is it Dave's Woodworks? Dave's Woodworking? Dave's Woodworks. I believe. Dave's Woodworks. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's Dave awesome. Foss, but it's Dave's Woodworks, yeah. Awesome guy. Go check him out. Cool. Wicked. I, I saw briefly the, the start of that um, um, SE Woodworks video with the, the blank that he was oh. using. Wait till um, you get to the handle, buddy. The handle is just well, spectacular. Do you know what? It, I was going through my feed, and I was like, oh, that looks interesting, but I didn't really have time to So I had to just basically i watched about the first 30 seconds and i thought no this i need to sit and watch this all the way through and to do this just i can tell um, after watching his, his previous videos so just, just don't put it in the watch later list because you'll never watch it later do you know i do <laughs> i do watch them later because if i don't put oh, them in go, that list they, just they, there about them. they do <laughs> not <laughs> it's just a long recovery <laughs> that's where they go to they go to die right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's more like it's more like rehab it's, it's a long process <laughs> <laughs> they get there eventually. Exactly. Exactly. It's more like rehab. Oh man. All right, all right let's go. Wrap it up. Wrap I think that, that pretty much does. So, um, Heath, thank you for coming on, mate. And I, I genuinely want to have a chat with you afterwards about the whole casting process in a little bit more detail, if you've got time. Um, but uh, before we we do that where can everyone find you on because you are quite big on social media now so where can everyone find you if they haven't found you previously i don't know about exactly big on social media but uh of course youtube heath knuckles uh, candy bar knuckles and uh instagram would it be hand underscore underscore stamped so hand underscore underscore stamped and that's where you can find me on instagram that's it that's that's pretty much the social media for me at this point uh, but again guys thank you so much i truly appreciate you having me on 
it's it's been fantastic i've enjoyed every every bit of it thank you so much awesome that's oh, been awesome. And, and obviously your, your youtube channel as well too uh, to yes which would be heath knuckles yes excellent what um what about you then chris where can people find you um, they can find me on Instagram now, thanks to Jamie. Uh, but I, they won't actually—they don't—they won't actually find me. They'll find Jamie's postings. Uh, but you can find me. You can find me on Facebook under uh, Make the First Cut, and on YouTube under my name, Chris Cute. I'm, I'm not sure about the wiseness of giving Jamie your Instagram. <laughs> no, no, no. It's Jamie ours. It's makers. You know, he he started the Makers International Instagram, so that's kind of I'm. Oh, part you're of, referring to that one, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, no, I, no. I, I, we're not going to give him access to the one under my name. Are you kidding me? I'm not suicidal. I'm not suicidal. I know what he would do to that. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I am. <laughs> Alan, what about you? What are you? Um, where are you on on uh, on Instagram on social media? <laughs> oh, very simple: the Woodworking Junkie Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Excellent. Joe? <laughs> Average Charles Joinery on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Average Charles Photography on Instagram. Cool. Jamie? You're muted. Uh, and I just turned my camera off as well for some unknown reason. Uh, you can find, uh, you can find Sorry, me you can keep it off. at JP Woodwork and Twitter and Instagram at JP underscore Woodwork. And as Chris just said, you can find us on Instagram now at makers underscore international underscore podcast. And I've also been a little bit devious. Um, and uh, I've got a bit of a surprise for you all. With the help of Steve Nealon, we've actually now got a website. You joking. A website. Right. Yeah. Um, wait, you wait, can wait, now wait. find us also at makersinternationalpodcast.com. Get no out of here. Get out of here. Really? <laughs> yeah, I've gone ahead and set us up a website. Did we just go for <laughs> <professional? laughs> We're, we're, we're moving on. We're, 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 we're professionals now, boys. Ma makers we're International professional. And that's dot com, is it? Yeah, makersinternationalpodcast.com. Makers International Podcast. Right, okay. Because I, I, I need to write that down so I can go and um, go and find that because A, a that's awesome, but with like a little dash of I'm a little bit nervous because you've done this and I don't quite know what to expect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just a bunch of Photoshop pictures Age of us in our underwear. Delayed. Just imagine the pictures on there. Yeah. Oh, my God. Ja Jamie, who who'd you say you did this with? Who was it? I did this with a guy called Steve Neal, and he's also the uh, the mastermind behind the the Makers Make It Matter uh, oh, campaign. Which, whilst whilst I mentioned that, that also begins at the beginning of the next month. So make sure you get awesome. right over there and sign up for that. All right, well, Steve, Pretty I, I hope I hope you took the heavy hand in the approach of creativity of creating this website for us. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you didn't say, "Hey, Jamie, what do you want?" And then no, no, okay, Jamie, that's awesome, man. A great job. Yeah. That's great. Thanks for that. Wicked. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, and thanks to um, you know your man there for for sorting it out as well. Because it wasn't really you that did all the kind of Cody oh. typey, was it? I mean, <laughs> no, do you, no. do you, you just you do the Photoshop I, I, stuff. I kind of, I kind of sat, I kind of sat in the background and <laughs> he did the most of the work. Well, he did all the work. <laughs> we take the zeros and ones by hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zero, 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 one, zero, one. <laughs> that is pretty. That is pretty cool. That is awesome. That is. Awesome. Do, do, are we, we, we going to have email addresses to to the podcast? Yes. Yeah, we'll all have email addresses, so we'll all be able to be contacted separately. Oh, individual that. emails, not just individual, like podcast. Individual thing. email. Yeah. So you'll be Richard at makersinternationalpodcast dot com, and Joe will be Joe at international uh, makersinternational dot com. Oh, cool. So all the people on YouTube who normally give us a thumbs down, they can actually just email the person that pissed them off from now on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna get a lot yeah, of hate mail. I, I was just thinking this name actually. <laughs> sorry, okay. sorry, Richard. Right, I, I I think we better wrap this up so I can go and deactivate my um, email. <laughs> account. So uh, awesome, excellent. Well, I've been Rick Morley. You can find me at brainfizz.uk and by all account, no, I'm not giving it out again. You'll have to rewind if you want that email. Um, and under my name on YouTube. So once again, a huge thanks to uh, to Heath for coming on, mate. That was. A, a lot of fun and I will be hitting you up with some advice on this casting process so uh, you all take care and hopefully we'll hear from you next week so take care alright buddy everybody have a good one see you next week see you.
Take it easy, everybody. Have a week. Bye.